Welcome to Unit 9 7. Unit 9 7, we're going to be looking at something called mixture problems. Today, we'll learn to solve mixture problems using a system of equations. And what is this going to mean here? Well, these are going to be word problems that has to do with mixing different items. A mixture can be any combination or blend of different elements, kinds, qualities, etc., resulting in a new compound. These mixtures can include uh, different varieties of chemistry, different varieties of metals, um, even coins. We're talking about nickels and dimes and quarters added together to make a certain amount of money. So please watch carefully here. Um, I'd like to give a, a thanks to a colleague who showed us this. We worked together and, uh, and he sat down and, and showed us how to lay this, lay this uh, out as easy as possible. This is not how the textbook teaches this, but upon um, collaborating and working together and seeing the ease of use of this, this is a much easier approach. I've taken this to other math students, a little older than you, and versus what they've learned, this is a much easier way to approach this. So please take good notes. You're going to need this for Algebra 1 and on into Algebra 2. This is going to come back a year, two years from now, and the teacher is going to expect you to know how to do this, and they may teach you a different way. If you can remember this, you'll be, uh, you'll be well off because this is the cleanest way that we've ever seen to work with this. So we're going to be mixing different amounts of certain items together. Uh, we're not going to really know what those amounts are typically, but we know what our goal will be. Okay, So we'll see what that will look like in a second. For example, we're going to have some amount of this item, whatever it is, plus some amount of this item. And together we're going to have a certain amount, of course, the sum of those amounts would be what would be in this container here. Of course we made this a small container, a small container, and then we made this a large container so we can see that that's going to be the culmination of what we're working toward. Now it's not just going to be the amounts, but it's also going to be the percent or the value of each item given to us. So for example, we may not know what X and Y are, but we are most likely going to be given a percent. So for example, it's going to be 6% of some X plus 12% of some Y. And our goal is to reach a certain percentage with a certain amount. And so we'll be given just enough information to solve these. So work carefully along uh, with us here. The first one, I just want you to sit back and watch. It says the pharmacist wants to mix an ointment that is 6% zinc oxide with an ointment that is 12% zinc oxide to make 30 grams of an ointment that is 10% zinc oxide. Uh, how many grams of each ointment should the pharmacist mix together? Now, don't be concerned about the zinc oxide or, or these words. What is that? Well, it's just a chemical uh, compound mixing, of course, um, zinc and however oxide. I think oxide means O2, but um, you have to ask one of your science teachers to be exact. Nonetheless, notice what's in red here. We're looking at the key parts of the math that's given to us. 6%, 12%, 30 grams, 10%. Let's see how we can take all of those and put them together. So just sit back and watch. And let's see what we can do. So the first equation, remember we're dealing with a system here, so we're going to end up with two equations. And the first equation is going to deal with the amounts that we're given. Don't worry about the units. You know, Don't worry about milligrams or liters or gallons. We'll deal with that in the answer. But for now, we the, the thing is we just don't know how much of the 6% we're going to use. We don't know how much of the 12% we're going to use. So we just label those X and Y. That's what we're used to. That's what's common. It's comfortable. But we do know this. We know that we want to make 30 grams of whatever we're making. Notice it says we're going to mix this and this. How much we don't know. But we want to achieve this. <clears throat> now, let's add on the next equation. The second equation is the percent or the value. Now here I'm going to ask you to drop the decimal points. Don't worry about, I know that 6% is 0 0.06 and 12% is 0.12. Don't be concerned with that. Just use the whole numbers. It'll all work out perfectly, and it makes things easier on us, yes? So notice that uh, the 6% zinc oxide, we'll go ahead and put that with the letter X. I usually use the smaller number <coughs> Excuse me, with the first variable. So 6% for the zinc oxide. And that is going to be a product there at the bottom. The second equation is going to be 6 times X, which is 6X. The 12 here is associated with our other unknown. So notice we've got 12%. So I'm going to multiply this by 12. And so what goes down here? Well, this should be 12y. 
And now here we're looking at 30 total grams at what percentage? Well, at 10%. So I'm just going to again use the whole number, multiply those together, and we get 300. And here are your two equations. Here's your first equation, and here's your second. And now let's roll that into a system and solve for our unknowns. So here we go. Roll this into your system here. And if you notice, the x's are lined up, the y's are lined up, the constants are lined up, but if we add them, no coefficients will cancel. So what can we do? So multiplying by negative 1 is not going to help. Adding is not going to help. Not yet. So what do you think? Well, what we could do here is maybe multiply the top equation by negative 6. Negative 6. What will this do? Well, this gives us our negative coefficient like we've learned to deal with in systems, correct? So we multiply this with negative 6, rewrite our equation, ignore the, that old equation. And now when we add straight down, what do we get? Well, we get a 0x here, so that's canceled out or eliminated. This gives us 6y equals 120. Now let's do a little quick math here, and we end up with dividing both sides by 6. And we know that y is 20. What was y associated with? Well, if we go back and look, this will give you a clue. Y was associated with the 12%, correct? The 12% ointment. So how many grams do we need? Well, we need 20 grams of the 12% ointment. So that's half of your answer. Well, how do we find the other half? Plug that 20 in to one of the original equations. I always go for the easiest one. So the original equation was X plus Y equals 30. Throw a 20 down, and we know, of course, X equals 10. So now we have 10 grams of the 6% ointment and 20 grams of the 12% ointment. All right. <coughs> Pardon me. So that is your very first mixture problem. All right, now let's try one that's similar to the previous. I'm going to keep all the words the same, but I'm just going to change some of the percents. So instead of this being 6, I'm going to make it 9. Instead of this being 12, I'm going to make it 15. But I'm going to keep our quantity and our goal the same. Okay, so let's work together on this one. And let's see how we set this up. Remember that the first equation is the amounts. Again, we're not sure of the amounts. We know we have some amount of 9%, some amount of 15%, but our goal is 30 grams, right? Now the second equation is the percent. Well, look back at the percents. You can assign the percents how you want. There's no math rule about that. <clears throat> I tend to go with the smaller number up front. It's just my habit. You can follow that or not. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by 9 because that's the percent I'm looking at, 9%. And 9 times x is easily 9x, which, of course, by default assigns 15% to the y, <clears throat> which will give me 15y. And then just slow down just a little bit and make sure what you're looking at we want 30 grams of ointment that is 10% zinc oxide. So 30 times 10 again is 300. So you can easily see your two equations there. Let's take those two equations and write them down in a system and let's solve for our unknowns. So again, there's no coefficients that are going to cancel. So what can we do here? What do you think? What can we do? Well, you, can, uh, you have a couple of choices here. Uh, I chose to pick the smaller number here, so what I did was I multiplied the top by negative 9. In doing so, I get a new equation, an equivalent equation, that I write underneath it here. Negative 9x minus 9y equals negative 270. Now I can ignore that first equation. Adding straight down, who gets canceled or eliminated? Well, in this case, the x does. Adding straight down, I get... 6y equals 30, adding these two numbers, 300 and negative 270. And we can quickly see that y is going to equal 5. So it looks like we're going to need 5 grams of the y. What's the y again? Go back and look. It was attached to the 15. So that's going to be 5 grams of the 15% ointment. Well, then how much of the 9% ointment? Well, plug it into the original equation. And if uh, we need 5 grams of this, then, of course, the 9% has got to be 25, correct? So we're looking at 25 grams of the 9%. Putting those two together, and you create this new mixture, 30 grams uh, at 10%. And this is exactly how pharmacists 
um, or as they used to call them apothecaries, would mix medicines. This is how it's done, whether it be a machine doing it or a person doing it, you can still find some old-time pharmacists who will mix their own medicines, and this is the kind of thing they look at. All right, now here I want you to take more of the lead here uh, and maybe venture out and work ahead of me a little bit. Pause the video as frequently as you want to and can and just try to work ahead. It says, Christine wants to make 12 gallons of a 50% alcohol solution by mixing together a 90% alcohol solution and a 30% alcohol solution. So notice what's in red here. Now, of course, in a textbook or a test, you're not going to see the different colors, red and blue, but I'm trying to make them stand out to you to look at what's important here. Our goal is 12 gallons of a 50% alcohol solution. What are we working with? We're working with a 90% and a 30%. So think of those alcohol bottles for medicine. One's got a 90% alcohol solution, one's got a 30. She wants to mix them together, and in the end, she wants it half alcohol and a total of 12 gallons, okay? So, why don't you right here, pause the video, try to start filling this out and see how far you can get, okay? Okay, did you start by saying, well, X plus Y equals 12, because that's our goal, 12 gallons. Then if you assign your percentages there, assign your percentages, we're going to be looking at 30% and 90% of these unknowns. We don't know how much 30%, we don't know how much 90%, but we know what our goal is, and that's 12 gallons at 50. So there's my 30%, and of course, 30 times X, that's really easy. We know our 90%'s got to go here, and 90 times Y is 90Y. And now, what are we looking for? 12 gallons at how much? 50%. So that gives us, multiply those together, 600. So some large numbers here, but no big deal. We'll just work with what we're given. Write the two equations there you see into a system. So taking a look here, what do we see? Well, of course, if we add straight down, nothing's going to help. We need something to eliminate. That would be best. So how about we multiply the top by negative 30. Now you could have chosen to get rid of the y if you'd like. You're going to end up with the same correct answers as I am here in just a minute. Let's multiply the top by negative 30. Run that through and forget about that top equation until the very end of the problem, okay? Let's go ahead and add straight down. What happens to our x's? Well, they go away. 90 plus negative 30, that's going to give us 60y. 600 and negative 360 gives us 240. Do some quick uh, division or even multiplication by inverse there if you'd like and we end up with y equals 4. So what does that say? Let's go back and think. What were we doing here? We were looking for the amount of the 30 percent and the amount of the 90 percent. Looks like this a 4 is attached to the y here so we need 4 gallons of the 90 percent solution. If that's the case, well then how much of the 30 percent solution looks like Obviously, we're going to need 8 gallons of that, okay? And there's your answer. 8 gallons of the 30% solution, 4 gallons of the 90% solution. All right, hopefully you uh, ventured out there and got that on your own. Now, this one here, our last one, <coughs> we're going to ask that you uh, maybe really go ahead and, and stop the video when we get through reading this and do this in completely on your own and be brave there and see how you do, and then we'll check your answer. Baking flour, which costs three dollars per pound, is made of combining bleached flour, which costs two dollars per pound, and unbleached flour, which costs four dollars per pound. Find the number of pounds of both the bleached and the unbleached flour required to make thirty pounds of baking flour. So, baking flour is, of course, when we when people uh, bake bread or uh, rolls or anything like that for families. You need both bleached and unbleached flour combined. So, take a look at those numbers and let's see what you got. So use what you've learned to solve this one on your own and we will check your answer shortly. Go ahead and press pause, work this one out to completion and let's see how you can do it. Alright, I trust that you're done and you're ready to check your work so let's see what you got. So here's what I did, I took the bleached, unbleached, and I threw it down as an X and a Y, and I know we want 30 pounds of this baking flour. Now the question is, well, how much is the bleached and how much is the unbleached 
Well, I know that the bleached is $2 per pound, and I know that the unbleached is $4 per pound, and I want to make 30 pounds at $3 per pound. And there's easily your two equations looking at you there. And now using the two equations, we can solve for the two variables one at a time. x plus y equals 30, 2x plus 4y equals 90. So let's see, I'm going to get rid of the x first. So I'm going to multiply the top by negative 2, which will give me an equivalent equation that I can write below it. I'll ignore the top one. Adding straight down, 4y and negative 2y, well that's going to give us 2y. 2y equals 30, so y must be obviously 15. So what does 15 mean? This is the un this is the pounds of the unbleached flour, right? 15 pounds of the unbleached flour. Well, if we want 30 pounds total and 15 pounds is unbleached, well that seems to me that it's half, correct? So therefore, just intuitively we know that we're going to need 15 pounds of the bleached flour as well. And there you go. 15 pounds of both bleach and unbleached. Combine them and you're all done. Alright, hopefully you got that. It's the correct answer on your own. That'll be your first uh, of many mixture problems that you'll be solving, not just with me this year, but on into your math career as you go far beyond what we're doing here in Algebra 1. Alright, if you'd like more instruction, please navigate to thinkcentral.com, type in that keyword, watch video example 2 if you'd like. Um, you're going to see a different approach to this, but you may learn uh, quite, quite a bit from Dr. Berger. He's a brilliant man, of course. Nonetheless, if you want to watch the video, if not, uh, there's a digital score practice that's available right there at the site as well, and you can click on that and get some instant feedback. All right. It's been a good time. Take care.